dig in. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time of sharing tonight. Lord, we thank you for our sisters and brothers that's gathered online tonight just to hear from you. Lord, you know our questions, you know our circumstances, you know our situations, Lord. And so we give them all to you. Lord, we ask that you would just feed us tonight. Lord, pour into our spirits so that we can develop as better witnesses. Lord, we ask that you would touch the world tonight with your loving hands as the United States tops almost 100,000 people of people who have lost loved ones from COVID-19. Lord, there's a lot of hurt and loss and disappointment in the land. Lord, we ask that you would lift every heart, lift every head, Lord. Wrap your loving arms around them. Know that you are Alpha and Omega. And so we thank you for the beginning and even for the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, how are you guys doing tonight? You awesome. hanging in there? Awesome. How are you? I am doing fantastic. I want to get into this Bible study. Um, last week we went over um, the power to be. The topic for last week's message was the power to be a witness, the power to be a witness. How many people know that it takes power to uh, be a witness for Jesus Christ? Yes, being a witness for Jesus Christ isn't always easy, especially when people don't want to hear your message. Hello, somebody. Sometimes people don't want to hear the truth. They would rather live in a fantasy world. They would rather uh, uh, believe that their wrongs are actually right. And so when you begin to speak the truth, oftentimes you are not well received. And so you need power. You need the Holy Spirit to empower you with that push that will continue uh, even when everything around you seem to be uncertain and unstable. So we need power. And, and Jesus promised the disciples that power, that power that we could only get from a supernatural source, that power that comes from the Holy Spirit that would lead and guide them into all truth and will aid them as they begin to spread the gospel throughout the world. How many people know that you can't do what you, what you say you're called to do for God unless you have the power? Amen. If you're trying to do what you're called to do or you say you're called to do for God and you don't have the power of the Holy Spirit, you're probably not going to be very successful. So I believe that there are some people on the line, I, our members are on the line, and, and we may have some folks that want to share tonight from their notes. So if we have anyone that's ready tonight to go into your notes, uh, let's try to dive in. What do you have? Just unmute yourself and we can just go ahead and dive right in. Oh, don't just don't just stand there. Let's go. Sister Christy, you got notes? Okay, so I that you um, started with a title, Be a Witness. Yes, ma'am. And, and we started with uh, Luke 24, 50 through 53. Oh, okay. Um, and that it, you talked about um, that they're, they were asking questions of the disciple to not get off focus because of what we want, but we have to stay focused on God. Mm-hmm. Um, that um, it's filled with politics, but we need to work on God's kingdom and keep focused on God. And that the power of the Holy Spirit will do, and you gave us um, six things, give you courage, mm -hmm. give you boldness, mm -hmm. give you confidence in Jesus, mm -hmm. give you insight or discernment, mm -hmm. give you the ability or a supernatural ability, okay. and we'll give you authority from God. Mm -hmm. And um, then the big point was that we can only do things um, through the Holy Spirit in God's time and by the power of God. Mm -hmm. And then you said the one of the last points that you made, I think, is um, that in order for us to advance the kingdom, that we are going to have to widen our circle. Mm -hmm. Great. Those are good notes. Anybody have something else to add? Thank you, Christy. Good notes. 
Tess, I also noted um, I had all those things that Sister Christy had as well. Um, but one of the things that I wrote down was that you have to, in order to be a powerful witness, you have to give an accurate account of what you've seen or what you've witnessed. And the accuracy to me was, was particularly, particularly stuck with me um, in terms of how to, how to be a, a good witness and how to be a witness that people will receive um, only, you know, giving the accurate account and giving that information. So that was one thing that I had in addition to what Chris, Sister Christy had. Right. Fantastic. That's a good, that is a great observation. There is absolutely no way that you can be a good witness if your witness isn't accurate, right? And so that is, that's very important. Um, anybody else? Uh, you did share with us um, six things um, that the power of the Holy Spirit will give us. And they were courage, <clears throat> excuse me, boldness, confidence, insight, supernatural ability, and authority. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much, Elder King. Can someone read for me? Anybody else? Does anyone else have something else to share? Pastor Michelle Dickon Kamel. Yes, sir. Uh, you also um, spoke about uh, power to do right, do it all, and do it under the, under the Holy Spirit. And you kind of uh, talked about disciples and God showed up, position of prayer, and also you talked about position of being on one accord. Mm. Wow. Okay, I think those notes were towards the end, basically spilling over into my sermon for this week, Camille. <laughs> and, and those are and absolutely true can I have someone uh, to go into uh, Luke so the scripture reference for Luke what was the scripture reference Luke 24 50 through 53 okay somebody get into Luke for me and read that do, uh, do you what version do you want? Do you want an NLT or do you want a King James? NLT is great. All right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and read. Then Jesus led them to, then Jesus led them to Bethany, and lifting hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up to heaven. So they worshipped him and then returned to Jerusalem, filled with great joy. And they spent all of their time in the temple praising God. Now let's go to Acts and read our scriptures from Acts. Acts 1, 6 through 8. So Luke has an account, and so does Acts. All right. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll read it. So when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? He replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. They are not for you to know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Wow. So here it is. Jesus is working with the disciples and he's working with them to the very end he is demonstrating for them he's telling them and he's demonstrating to them what next level look like i want you to get this he's not only telling them about what their next level assignment would be but what next level look like do you think that's important do you think modeling is important? Absolutely. Yes. Right. And so as a church, uh, we have an assignment. As a people of God, we have assignment to uh, make disciples. We have an assignment uh, after we're filled with the Spirit to become witnesses of Christ. And if that is our assignment, one of the good things about a witness, they tell what's accurate. They tell the accurate account of what happened, right? What happened? 
and they would even demonstrate if necessary what it looked like and so the church has a great understanding of being a witness in terms of being able to tell people how to live, but they get a little tepid on the demonstration part. What do you guys think about that? Amen. So if you're walking right, you can't be a witness, can you? You can talk about it, but you can't demonstrate how to live. I wish I had one person to understand. It is as your walk is as important as your talk. Amen. If you're going to be a witness for God. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Absolutely. Amen. In fact, your walk needs to be stronger than your talk because people would rather see a sermon than hear one. Amen. Absolutely. Do you believe that? I believe. It. Yes. Amen. And so when the, <laughs> apostles, when the apostles were with Jesus, some things happened right and as he began to teach them he had to operate in real time he had to make corrections on the spot and sometimes the church don't like to be corrected we're in a season where we believe that everything goes hello somebody wow we're in a season where wrong has been elevated to right that's how you end up standing on a black man's neck and with your hands in your pocket, like that is an appropriate posture for making an arrest. Oh, I, I lost everybody. No, no, no. Nah, you speaking the truth. Are you still with me? Amen. Yes. So Jesus Amen. To, 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 to catch the disciples in a vulnerable position where they're literally off track. And then he begins to demonstrate how to get folk back on track who's off track. Can you guys pick it up here? What do you see Jesus doing in this, in this uh, sixth verse? How's his teaching coming to life in the sixth verse? In the sixth verse, he says, so when the apostles were with Jesus, they kept asking him, Lord, has the time come for you to free Israel and restore our kingdom? Hmm. Amen. They got an agenda, don't they? Yeah. Jesus replies, the father alone has the authority to set those dates and times. And they are there for you to know. But you shall receive power, after which the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Let's just pause right there and see if you can pick out some of the some of the teaching and some of the modeling that Jesus is doing to get the disciples back on track. First of all, you have to be you have to be able to identify what's off track. Deacon Bruce, can you put me in a, di a different view? Can you can you identify what's off track? Anybody can identify what's off track? Um, the, the disciples are asking about restoring our kingdom. Could you say that one more time, sir? And at the end of the verse, they're asking Jesus about freeing Israel and restoring our kingdom. That's off track. What's off track That's about that? The kingdom doesn't belong to them. It's God's kingdom. So they were taking ownership of something that did not belong to them. Okay. Okay. Let's, I think I heard Elder King trying to get in. Amen. I was, um, I was looking at that verse earlier today, mm -hmm. and what screams at me is the fact that even when we've been through something, um, as we are beginning to come out and as God has delivered, if we're not mindful, we will still look at our own agenda. Mm -hmm. And so um, the disciples... Um, as I was reading that, they're looking at their, what they perceive the outcome should be, as opposed to um, the God-mandated outcome. So mm -hmm. they're trying to box uh, Christ into a corner and get him to predict based on what they are looking for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're, they're focused on me and my, right? Mm -hmm. They're me and my was basically narrowed 
to a Jewish perspective. They wanted to find out when Jesus was going to free Israel. They wanted to free them from the Roman oppression. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And so they wanted to figure out when is it that the Jews were going to reign again. That is why they said, and restore our kingdom. The hour had nothing to do with Jesus. Oh, yeah, the yeah. hour was on, related. This is, this is Chair Randall calling me. Hold on one second. The hour was related to the Jewish kingdom. Do you get that? Amen. The hour, the hour in that was not inclusive of what big god wanted to do hello somebody bless god and so oftentimes you have to be careful even with people in church that talk about our work or our church some of that has to do with what they are hoarding for themselves mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they're not working on our kingdom at all as far as the kingdom of god some people work for their little kingdom amen that? yes sir Mm. Can I can I can I make that any more plain? And you have to be careful and, and, and you have to come clean about your agenda. Because many of us come into church with different agendas. There's somebody's background that is is messing up. So I need you to mute your backgrounds. Thank Great, you. Sir. All right. So you have to be very, very careful when it comes to the agenda, your own agenda. And you have to be honest about that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Sometimes when we come into church, we're not always working for God. Amen. And we know that by the amount of praise we require. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had somebody to say amen, Pastor. Amen. amen. We understand if we're working for God, based on the amount of praise that we require, the amount of coddling that we require, the amount of amens we require. When you are really working for God, you don't need anybody to chime in and say anything. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. You just work for God. You know that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. It doesn't matter if you believe in it or not. In other words, you have heard me say oftentimes that pastor is going to go with the goers. If God has given me a revelation, I'll go by myself. Amen. But it's going to get done. How many people understand that it is God's kingdom that we need to make sure that we're operating for and operating in and not our own agenda? Yes. And, and the disciples just showed their hand. They literally showed their hand. How in the world could Jesus in good conscience ascend to heaven and he knew that these guys weren't ready? Mm. He knew that they were still self-serving. I mean, how was Jesus so assured that the gospel would even continue because these guys had the wrong mindset? And the scripture said they kept asking him. They asked him repeatedly. They asked him repeatedly. Why? Because they were self-centered and self-focused. Mm. We see this in church all the time. Folks asking repeatedly, what about this? And what about that? What about this? And when we going to do this? And when we going to do this? How about just get saved first? Master that. Live holy for two weeks. See if you can work that out. Amen. Praise God. Don't worry about you starting a Bible study. Can you come to Bible study for, for first? And let's see if we can trust you to have one. Bless his name. Oh my. They don't want Mother Francis, they don't want to talk the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. Everybody want to be in charge. And then when you get the opportunity to be in charge, you got every excuse in the world. I don't understand how Jesus trusted them. I have to stay down another 40 days, at least. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But when you know what's coming, when you have been promised the Holy Spirit, Jesus fully understood that even their immaturity 
when they are come face to face with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will equip them with everything that they need to complete the assignment. Even foolishness has to fall face down to the Holy Spirit. Nothing yeah. can contend with it. Yeah. Amen. And so Jesus's confidence in leaving was not in man. Jesus's confidence was in that third person, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, somebody. That's good. Yes, God, amen. God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. So he understood that if physically he was taken out of this earth, but he left the Holy Spirit, that would be all that they need to be able to sustain them, to shore them up, to, to build up those errors in, the, in their characteristic, in their spirit, man, where they will be allowed the ability to move forward. In God. Amen. Praise God. Does this make sense to anybody? Absolutely. Yes, indeed. Yes. And then so when he told them to wait on it, he told them to go, go and wait on it. He literally meant wait until the equipper comes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay put. Don't do Stay nothing. Put. Yeah. In other words, don't go out there and try to build no church because you're not ready. Amen. A lot of people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear wait. They want to just launch out. I'm starting a Bible study. I'm starting to this. How, just wait. Just get filled first. And when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, your agenda, you, it won't matter anymore. And then you'll be operating on the agenda of the Holy Spirit, which will take precedence and accomplish all that God has assigned you to do. Praise and God. it'll be easy for you. The workload will become easy. Your burdens will become light. Does this make any sense to you? Amen. And so he told him, he says, hey, listen, I, I, I see Jesus. You're right. So the first thing he, what he, Jesus did was identify that they were off because they were talking about their agenda and their kingdom. Then you see him shift because he has to respond. So he identifies the problem and then he has to respond. What did he shift to? What was his tone? What did he say? How did he address it? Come on. Come on. In verse eight, he indicated that, um, uh, well, in verse seven, he said it's the father's authority to make that decision. And then in verse eight, he went on to say, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and then you will be my witness. Okay, hold on. let's go back. That's a great point. So when it says the father alone has the authority to set those times and those dates. And so he was directly answering when it is that you're going to free Israel and when you're going to restore our kingdom. And he says, hey, listen, this authority uh, doesn't come from you or me. The father has the authority to do this. And so this is the Lord's doing. And so he put the onus on the only person that can make a difference in that regards. How many people know that you can't change everything? There are some things that you got to say, I don't have the authority to do it. Only the father knows the times and dates. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. Only the father knows those times and dates. And so what he does is he answers them directly and he shifts the focus upwards. He didn't shift the blame. He shift the focus. And so this, sometimes you have to escalate your request. My mind. Sometimes we have to escalate. Sometimes we're requesting from people what only the Father can answer. Oh, I wish I had one. Amen. Amen. We're expecting, you know, from people only those things that the Father has the authority to give us. And so there's sometimes in situations where we have to understand when to escalate. Jesus had to escalate. Do you see that in Scripture? Amen. Yes. And then he shifts and he begins to hit at the heart of the question. 
maybe to the extent that the disciples didn't even realize what they were asking. They thought that they were asking about when it was that they were going to, you know, rule again. But what they were asking for was power. And so he had to redirect, you know, uh, their, their, their questions to get at the root of what they were talking about. And what they were talking about was the power, the power, the power to govern, the power to govern. They were concerned that, that Israel be, will be put in first place again so they could set policy and they could set laws. But because they didn't understand that God wasn't concerned with the policy and the laws, he was concerned with the kingdom. Amen. He was concerned with the kingdom. And so he understood that the power that they were trying to get they were going to abuse it if they didn't under have a kingdom mindset. Amen. People will abuse power if they do not have a kingdom mindset. That's Praise good. God. That's good. Mm. Amen. The abuse of power can always be pointed back to a person that does not have a kingdom mindset. What am I saying? Pastor Vines, there is no way that they, uh, the police force could have uh, had their foot on or their knee on Mr. Floyd's neck if they had a kingdom mindset. You can call them a Christian all day long. You can call them very fine folks on both sides. But if you have a kingdom mindset, you will understand that is God's creation you killing. Amen. Amen. Bless God. Hello, somebody, that you're not going to see him as a, a black man or as a threat, but you will see him as a brother. When you have a kingdom mindset, you understand there are many brothers and sisters. Come on now. Amen. And yes. so Jesus had, to, Jesus had to address these disciples who were off. They're worried about, you know, rulership in the earth realm, and he's trying to get them to get ready for the kingdom. Bless God. They were talking past each other. Bless God. Do you guys understand that? Have you ever had that to happen? Where you were talking about one thing and your kids was talking about another. You was talking about homework and they were talking about getting something iPad, iPod, and I did. <laughs> Amen. Oh, nobody wants to hear about that. It's the same thing happens with Jesus. And so he tells them, the power that you're looking for, ye shall receive power, right? Because what they were asking for was when we going to get back in power. I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm explaining some that is a, a red herring and you may not get it, but the power that they were asking for was the same power that they were going to abuse just like their abusers. Yeah, yeah. So he said, you're going to receive power after which the Holy Spirit comes upon you. The power that you get is going to be given to you after you get the Holy Spirit so you won't abuse your power. Amen. Amen. I wish I had one person to understand that, that when we have the Holy Spirit, Pastor Vine, when the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and lead us and guide us and directs us and give us the power that we need to go and be the witness that God has called us to be, to go and speak about situations, to speak life into other people, to lay our hands on the sick and have them recover. That type of power comes from the Holy Spirit. And when you have that power that comes from the Holy Spirit, you won't hurt folk. Amen. Amen. That's good. Oh, I wish I had one where they sitting up That's here like good. the frozen chosen. Come on, yep. preach me. Come on, me. <laughs> huh? How many people know that we need that power from the Holy Spirit? We don't need that man-made power. Amen, amen, amen. And if you have the Holy Spirit, when you get the man-made power, all it does is help you lead better. All it does is help you to lead better. Praise God. Huh? Pastor Michelle. Yes, ma'am. 
um, this this is a good place, I think, um, to talk to us, the church, right here, right now, um, because so many times in uh, what we have perceived as normal church, um, we get too far off to the left. And so just like uh, Christ took them back to the place of authority and where the authority was and what the answer was according to the authority, um, at some point we ourselves need to, when things start going too far to the left, those that we have oversight over, we need to say, but the word says, we need to take them back to the letter of the word. This is what Christ said in the word and, and bring things back to the kingdom so that we can dismiss personal agendas. Right, right. It is, this is something that the church is grappling with, right? So who's going to have control over the church? People in their agendas or the world's agenda, or will it be the kingdom agenda? These are very, very, very um, pertinent questions for the church right now. You do it God's way, or you're going to do it world's way. Most people have, uh, many people, many pastors have opened their um, pulpits and they've opened their churches to uh, very secular ways of doing things. And uh, they, they hide behind, well, this is what's necessary to get people interested. If I got a sin to get you interested, hello, somebody? I shouldn't have to compromise what God called me to do to get you interested. Amen. Amen. Oh, I wish I had somebody that would just jump on in there. We're making a lot of compromises. I mean, the church is full of compromise now under the pretense of growing the church, under the pretense of growing the church. I need this to grow the church. You don't need a smoke machine to grow the church. Amen. Hello? Amen. You don't need to come in my lobby and, and, and we have uh, light, blue lights in the basement Sunday, uh, you know, for you to have a good time at my church. Amen. I don't have to end my Facebook live and start a dance party to advance the kingdom and, and expand the ministry. I, I don't have to do it. Yes, indeed. Bless God. And so some of the times we are just off. We just, you know, as disciples, as the church, we're just off. And we have to do what Jesus did, kindly redirect. Mm -hmm. Address and redirect. Yeah. We just have to address and redirect. Just type that, address and redirect. Yeah, yeah. And that's very, very important because sometimes the church has a tendency to harp on stuff. And all that does is just mute, get you muted. You remember Charlie Brown? Anybody remember Charlie Brown? Charlie Brown, you, you know, folk would be talking to Charlie Brown and he'd be like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> some of our preaching, some of uh, our dogma, you know, has turned into wah, wah, wah. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you want to really deal with um you know people being off or people losing focus there's two short things that you need to do address and redirect amen after jesus addressed it and he redirected them he did something else that i thought was fabulous he actually gave them uh some purpose for me it says and you will receive power that's good to say go stay you're going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And then he gives them purpose after which, right? What's going to happen? After the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witness. You're yeah. going to be my witnesses. So he instills them with purpose. He addressed, he redirects, and he gives them purpose. Can you try to see a formula in that? Amen. Can That's anybody good. see a formula in that, how we are supposed to, you know, deal with people when they're off? Our kids, 
Uh, Amen. See a new formula in that. I'm going to address it, what you did. I'm going to redirect you, right? And I'm going to give you a purpose. Can you see that? Sometimes you have to discipline, uh, you know, uh, your subordinates, people on your job, folks that report to you. Sometimes you have to discipline them. And here's how you do it. Somebody repeat it back to me. It's three ways. What do you do? Three things. Address, redirect, and give purpose. And give purpose. Mm -hmm. Right? It tells them you're going to be my witness, tells them, telling people everywhere. Right? Telling people everywhere. And then not only did he address, redirect, and he gives them purpose, he gives them direction now. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He gives them direction. What do you find in direction? Come on, guys. We're going to wrap this up. It's going to be an early night. Let's go. Amen. Then, you would, then you would go out and be my witnesses to all the ends of the earth. No, ma'am. Kind of, sort of. Let's pick it up, Pastor Vine. What's the direction? He gave them some directions. I think Pastor Vine is muted. Somebody pick it up. There's some, there's some directions. Tell people, tell people about me everywhere. Yep, everywhere. And then he gets specific with the directions. He told them exactly where. He said in Jerusalem. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. in Samaria. Yes. When you give somebody directions, you give them a location. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he gives them a location. He says, I want you to tell people about me. You'll be my witnesses everywhere. In other words, you are not to limit yourselves. Mm -hmm. You're not to limit yourselves. You're going to be my witnesses everywhere in Jerusalem, in home, in your home, right? In Judea. Samaria, right? And to the uttermost ends of the earth. He gives them direction. This is corrective action, right? That will cause exponential growth. Right down. You know, Pastor Michelle, I like the fact that um, when he gave them direction, he didn't say to the uttermost parts of the earth first right. so that they could pick and choose. He, get, he painted a road map. Yes. Go here, go here, go here, and mm -hmm. then to the mm -hmm. othermost parts of the, world, of the earth. Right. So I want you to deal with the people that are like you, your family, right? Uh, your ethnicity, your religion, right? And then he begins to broaden it from there. People in Ju uh, Judea, right? People in Samaria, folks that's mixed. Right. So he he begins to widen the circle as as he begins to send them out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He starts off correcting them and he has to redact. He has to address something. He has to address them uh, having their own personal agendas being off off of the kingdom mission, off of the kingdom mandate. He had to address that. He couldn't run from it. He had to directly confront it because that was going to cause a huge problem. Is that right? In fact, it was that very misunderstanding that caused him to be crucified in the beginning. Jesus. It was that very misunderstanding of their own agenda that caused the Palm Sunday crowd to turn on him. So he had to address it. Oh, I wish I had one person. They got me in a different view, so I can't see you now. Amen. But if you understand that God is requiring from us that we do this work, that he's requiring from us that we do this work of becoming witnesses, becoming prepared to be a believable witness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And as we do that, we'll, we'll be able to spread the gospel, make disciples, and do all that God has called us to do. Do you believe it? 
Amen. Do you receive that today? Amen. Amen. Any questions? Let me look uh, to Michelle. Yes. When when he's talking about that too and telling them um, that it's not, you know, it's not their concern, it's God's concern. I think at that point in time too, he's trying to teach us about patience. Woo. Absolutely. Right. So remember, he's promising them to wait on the Holy Spirit. That's another patient exercise, right? And he's telling them, listen, there are things that you're not going to be able to control. You got to have patience with it. Some things only the father can do. In, a, in other words, don't concern yourself with that. That's bigger than you. There are some things in life, Christy, that happens to us. Listen, it's bigger than us. And we just got to give it to God. There are people that suffered, you know, it seems like they suffered enough. Oh, I lost my job during COVID. Oh, I lost a couple of loved ones during COVID. I've lost this and that. It's like, how much loss can you take? But there are some things that's just bigger than our human comprehension. And we owe it to ourselves to give it to God so that we can see the of what God wants to do through that situation. So along with our patience, he's calling us to trust him also. Absolutely. It goes right back to uh, the, the sermon from last week. Yep. Wait on it. Wait on it. And God begins to uh, deal with our patience. We show our patience. We show our trust in God. He begins to refine our patience as we wait. So yes, absolutely. Absolutely. One of the last things that happened, Christy, is as God was speaking and telling them and giving them their, their assignment and their direction, all of a sudden, Jesus was taken up. He had gone to the next level. And in that moment, they had to decide if they were ready to go to the next level too. In that moment, after he had given them their final assignment and their final directions, his job was finished and he was taken up. And they gazed up in the skies and they began to look and watch him. And at that moment, Jesus agreed with his assignment. He was out of here. It was their turn to agree with their assignment and decided to take it to the next level. This is where we are now. The Lord has given us all a pause. We've been gazing for nine or so weeks now. Is that right? We've been sheltered in place, gazing up to God. God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to say? How do you want me to do it? And the truth is, we literally need to decide whether or not we're going to go to the next level on our assignments. You can keep gazing if you want to. But the world is soon to reopen. What have you accomplished? Do you even believe what God has said to you in this time of COVID? Right? Stop gazing. Let's get going. Stop gazing. Let's get going. There are two men that met with the disciples. And they asked them, why are, you, why are you gazing? And I asked the church tonight, why are you gazing? Jesus has already made promises to us. He's given us direction. He's, he's, done, he's followed these same steps. What did I tell you? He wanted to correct us, right? So he addressed the situations. He addressed the situations of us putting everything first but God. Is that right? Amen. He addressed the situation. What's next? What was the next step? Come on, I gave you a good plan. Redirect. He redirected us. So what is he doing? He did this for the church. He addressed us to uh, for putting more regard for the building than we did in him. And so he had to redirect us. 
redirect all of our focus off, off of our programming and onto our relationship with him. Is that right? Can you see that? Amen. I wish I had one person that would agree. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Pastor Vine says it like this. Are you putting, picking up what I'm putting down? Amen. We're picking it up. What's the third thing? He addressed it. He redirected. He gave it. Come on. Gave it purpose. He gave it purpose. And yeah. so God has taken this time to give us new purpose. Many of us have found some of our ministry gifts. Many of us have started businesses. Many of us have reconnected it with our families, with our children. He has given us new purpose. And he's even done the last thing, which is to give us direction. And so as this world begins to open up, as stores, as businesses, as churches begin to open up, as the whole world begins to open up, the question is, are you ready to go to the next level? Or are you going to stand still gazing? My God. Amen. Watch a business open. Hello, somebody. Amen. Watching success happen all around you. Watch the Mormons go out there and get make disciples. Hello, somebody. Amen. Yes. Watching everybody witness except for the Christian church. Don't just gaze. Go forward. Any questions? Praise God. Any questions? Any wrap-up comments? Praise God. Praise God. You know, Any we have to be mindful, Pastor Michelle, um, that as we are, are listening to this word and taking it in, that we don't just think that it is the church agenda um, that we have to be mindful of. It's our personal agendas as well. Because this is a time for us to um, to straighten up um, a lot of our agendas so that God can get glory out of every aspect of our lives, not just um, the things that uh, regard the church, the kingdom, the church um, ex ex um, advancing the kingdom, but we have to realize that it is an entire process. It is the whole person, not just this little aspect. Um, I get, um, get a grip on this and make sure I'm doing God's business right. Well, we are God's business. And so we need to make sure that we have applied this word to all, um, every aspect of ourselves holistically. I think that's I think that's absolutely right. Anybody else? Anybody have any closing comments? It is absolutely a holistic word. Please do not leave it in the four walls of the church. This will be good for you <laughs> if you take it and will work in every area of your life. Any questions? Any more comments? I'm not on Facebook, so I, I, if there's somebody that want to check the Facebook page to see if we missed somebody tonight. Any comments? I see um, a comment in the um, Zoom stream that says, don't put new wine in old wine skins. Absolutely. 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 As God begins to do a new thing in us, to us, through us, there's going to be a tendency to want to revert back to the familiar. There's always going to be that tendency. We must resist it. Just like the disciples, they had a tendency to push their own agenda. And we must redirect ourselves. The Holy Spirit will redirect you, right? But you got to listen. We have to listen. We have to trust God. We have to wait on him. 
Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you. We're going to pray and we're going to be dismissed. We know there's only one way to leave a holy and whole service. That's just going forward. And so let us go ahead and, and just say together our benediction, which is also a prayer. Now unto him. Come on. Who's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we can ask. Oh, you can ask a thing. According to the power that's working in us. Lord, we ask that you will work in us, work this word in us, Lord, so that we can be your witnesses and do all that you called us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen, if there's someone here that like to give their tithes and offering or share a donation, please don't hesitate to do that. Go to our website, holyandwhole.org. So that's H-O-L-Y-A-N-D-W-H-O-L-E dot org. And uh, at the top of the um, website, you will see a donate tab or a give tab. Click on donate and you can leave your tithes and offering right there. God bless you. I can't wait to see you on Sunday. Don't forget, it is what? Pentecost, Pentecost Sunday. Sunday. Wear your white. Let's get ready to receive the power of the all Holy right. Ghost all over again. Anybody is due for a filling or, or a refilling? Anybody's Amen. due for a refilling? Amen. 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 All right, so we'll catch you right here on Sunday morning at 11 a.m. God bless you. Go forward. Praise God. Hey guys, how y'all doing?